And so another year is in the books with 2023, the year of Barbenheimer now ending. It was a dramatic one for entertainment with shelved movies, canceled stars, surprising hits and misses, and dual strikes that brought the industry to a standstill for many months. Nevertheless, there were plenty of great movies, so here's Joe Blow's official top 10 for the year. Now, before we start, there are a few honorable mentions to get out of the way. One is Godzilla Minus One, which to me stands as one of the greatest monster movies ever made, and the success of this film goes to prove that, hey, audiences who like tenpole movies they don't mind subtitles. So go ahead, put out more Japanese and Chinese and Korean films on the big screen where they belong in theaters. Also, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, a surprising box office disappointment. And the next film is actually dropping Dead Reckoning from the title because I guess they're trying to distance themselves. But it was still an expertly assembled action film with some of the best stunt work and style of the year. I also thoroughly enjoyed Creed 3 as well as Greta Gerwig's Barbie, with both just falling a tad short of making my top 10. At the same time, other films like Bradley Cooper's Maestro, American Fiction, and a whole slew of others are also worth checking out this holiday season. But without further ado, here are the Joe Blow Top 10 Movies. Number 10, John Wick Chapter 4. While maybe it didn't need to push three hours, Chad Stahelski's fourth and potentially final John Wick film is an expert end, if indeed it's the end, to one of the best action franchises in recent memory. Keanu Reeves defies age and delivers a terrific physical performance in all aspects of this action film, However, the stole is somewhat stolen by Donnie Yen as Kane, the blind assassin sent after John Wick, and this, I have to say, is his best English language showcase by a long shot. You're going to die. Maybe not. Number nine is Yorgos Lanthimos' Poor Things. Emma Stone delivers a truly fearless performance as a woman who's given a brain of an infant and has to quickly come of age in a gonzo society that makes this eccentric period epic wildly experimental and one of a kind. Truly, you're not going to see anything else even remotely like this in theaters this year, and it gives Willem Dafoe another classic role to play as her kind of sympathetic scientist creator. This is Mr. McCandles. Hello, Bella. No. Number eight is Blackberry. Matt Johnson made one of the best Canadian films ever made with Blackberry, which charts the rise and fall of the Canadian tech company. Jay Baruchel and Johnson himself are excellent as two of the men behind the technology, but Glenn Howerton of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia delivers one of the performances of the year as Jim Bazzilli, the unscrupulous CEO who took the company for a ride. Boy, did he ever. There is a free wireless internet signal all across North America and nobody has figured out how to use it. It's like the force. Number seven is Air, another true story. And this one centers around Nike's efforts to sign a young Michael Jordan to an endorsement contract that helped make them a behemoth. While the premise doesn't sound like it would lend itself to a wildly entertaining film, Ben Affleck's made a hilarious and humane movie that speaks to the rebel in all of us. Also, it's always fun to see Ben Affleck and Matt Damon together on screen. I hope this starts the beginning of Matt and Ben 2.0. Don't change that now for a rookie. Yes. Who's never set foot on an NBA court. If that's the literal definition of rookie, yeah. Number six is Killers of the Flower Moon. Martin Scorsese's fact-based account of the Osage murders has seemingly made more headlines for its length than the quality of the film itself. It's a superb, unique accounting of one of the cruelest crimes in American history. Leonardo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro are masterly in their portrait of the banality of evil, but at the same time, Lily Gladstone gives voice to the voiceless as Molly Burkhart in an amazing performance, with her playing one of the few survivors of this terrible conspiracy. I mean, Martin Scorsese is a master. If he needs to take three and a half hours to tell a story as epic as this, I say, let him do it. Money flows freely here now. I do love that money, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, one of the greatest superhero movies ever made, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. These animated Spider-Man movies will go down in history as absolute boundary pushers. While many complain that the superhero genre is fatigued, this was still a major hit, as was James Gunn's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. And those movies both prove that creativity and originality lend themselves well to any genre. God, I cannot wait for the next Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse film. These are the best Spider-Man movies ever made, and they're absolutely superb. And then I looked at my uncle and... Uh, let me guess. He died? Number four is memory. What's memory? I bet that's the question you're all asking yourselves right now. Memory is a low-budget character drama starring Jessica Chastain and Peter Sarsgaard, which hasn't come out in theaters yet, but is in the middle of a very small awards qualifying run in places like New York and LA. It should start to open more in January. 
While it doesn't have the benefit of a major studio behind it, it's a heart-wrenching story centered around how two people manage to fall in love despite the fact that one of them has early onset dementia. Now, it sounds very depressing, but it's actually not, and Sarsgaard delivers one of the greatest performances of the year. Hi, welcome back. The usual for you? Oh, yeah. What's the usual? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know? No. Do you remember her? No. Number three is Oppenheimer. Part of me likes to think that the fact that Christopher Nolan's three-hour movie about the father of the atomic bomb will lead to a comeback for movies made for adults, I don't know, it could be a one-off. Even if it is, though, Nolan's made one of his best films with Killian Murphy's performance in the title role a highlight in an already brilliant career. Somebody said something interesting. You know how superhero movies always have post-credit sequences? In some ways, the story of the atomic bomb does have post-credit sequence. We just happen to be living in it. Are we saying there's a chance that when we push that button, we destroy the world? Chances are near zero. Near zero. What do you want from theory alone? Zero would be nice. Number two is The Iron Claw. The Curse of the Von Erics is one of the saddest stories in wrestling, as Sean Durkin's A24 produced account of their lives is absolutely a masterpiece. Zac Efron, Jeremy Allen White, and Harris Dickinson will break your heart in the sad but ultimately hopeful story of the bonds of brotherhood. And also, it's just fun to watch a movie about wrestling in the 80s, isn't it? It is such a good film, and I hope it's a hit. We're here to restore justice to the wrestling federation that our father built with his own two hands. The hands that were passed down to us, the hands that will deliver the iron claw to you. And now it's time for number one, which is The Holdovers. Alexander Payne's first film in several years is a new Christmas classic with Paul Giamatti getting the role of a lifetime as a crusty teacher at a boys prep school in 1971 who is forced to look after the kids whose parents don't want them back for the holidays. It's a touching, empathetic, heartwarming, hilarious, and defiantly R-rated and old-fashioned film. It's like a lost movie from the 70s you'll want to watch again and again, especially around the holidays, with it being a new Christmas classic. I can't fail this class. Oh, don't sell yourself short, Mr. Coates. I truly believe that you can. So, those were our top 10. Of course, I'm sure we've left off many great movies, so make sure to let us know in the comments what we missed, because that's the beauty of lists like this. They always inspire conversations, and we want to know what your top 10 are, so make sure to let us know.